where cold water meets harsh rocks and a beautiful oasis. Where market culture meets one of the most important trading points for camels in Oman. Visit Wadi Bani Khalid with me, one of Oman's most beautiful and popular oases, and the famous camel market in the town Sinau that only takes place on Thursdays. After the desert excursions, I'm back on a bike and I literally don't know yet where I will end up today. With this desert visit, I kind of checked the last like natural highlight I really wanted to do in Oman. But there is some more cultural stuff and a town I still want to see. But that would be more for tomorrow or day after tomorrow and not for today. So um, it will be interesting where we end up. Because I didn't really have a destination for this day, I first decided to go to a place where I could do something I had not done yet. To go to a wadi, where I could actually swim and escape the heat by having a refreshing dip in some cool water. So I go off the big road here now and follow the signs that say Wadi Bani Khalid because that's the wadi I hopefully will swim in very soon. It was recommended to me by the guys from the nomadic desert camp and they said it's very popular and is probably the most famous wadi in Oman, but it's supposed to be still worth it. So we will see. You guys might remember our excursion to Wadi Bani Nakr at the canyon bottom of Oman's highest mountain and Wadi Bani Auf, the steep off-road excursion that we went on. But instead of a rough riding, I this time would go to a wadi for the same reason most people in Oman visit wadis, for the nature and for the swim in its water-filled pools. This is a pretty nice road here, very curvy and going to the mountains again after I have been to the desert flats. And so far it doesn't feel so busy. So let's hope that the wadi is as empty as the roads here. I think I'm getting closer now. There are a lot of cars parking here and it's much more busy. Let's see how that will be. Somehow it feels very strange to be at a busy place in Oman because everything else was so uncrowded so far. I just arrived at the Wadi and this is my bike and this is my swimming gear here, which is actually perfect because it's long armed. And I will just jump in like this. Wadi Bani Khalid is the most famous and maybe as well most popular of all wadis in Oman. In the middle of rough rocks and sharp mountains, there is this beautiful oasis with crystal clear water and palm trees. Locals say that Wadi Bani Khalid is one of the most beautiful and well-kept oases in the whole country. The deep green, pleasantly cool fresh water pools offer the perfect contrast to the great and colorless beautiful landscape surrounding it. So there is this cave that is somewhere up here, one kilometer up the mountain. And I don't know if I should go, I'm so sweaty and warm already. Maybe I go swim first. I still decided to hike up the mountain direction cave because there were some more pools that I wanted to check out first. 
So I decided to walk in, but it turned out that this place is much more busy than the place on the front. So I will go back now to swim. Compared to the amount of people visiting Wadi Bani Khalid, the pools were still kind of empty. Many people visiting didn't want to jump into the water at all. But I would not be me if I could ever resist dipping in the cool water if possible. And this indeed felt like one of the best things that I had done in the last weeks. It's pretty amazing if you ask me. And you can just swim here and you're fresh yourself. No matter if man or woman, you should dress accordingly if you want to swim. Especially the male tourists I saw seemed to have a problem to follow the instructions given at the entrance of the Wadi that clearly ask for covering your upper body and shoulders. Most locals just wear a t-shirt over their swimwear. But luckily, I didn't even have to worry about appropriate swimwear. I just kept on my long motorcycle underwear. Very appropriate. And at the same time, most refreshing, because it would dry on my body afterwards while riding and cooling me down. I'm very happy I did this, even though this body is kind of busy, but uh, very beautiful and so refreshing. Now I will sit on my bike with my wet long underwear and I think it will be super cool and super nice. ready to go again and I actually wanted to go to the sea but I decided against it because it's quite a long way and tomorrow morning I want to go to a very special market so I will already go in this direction even though that means driving all the way back that I already came So leaving this beautiful oasis and yes, it was definitely worth it and um, until I reached the oasis I actually had no clue what I would do afterwards and I had two options. One of them was heading to the sea and going to a place that is famous for its sea turtles because there are thousands of them nesting there but it's not a nesting season yet and I just um, talked to another tourist who said they had been there and there was only one turtle and about 50 tourists surrounding it and that sounds horrible so I decided to go for the other option. My other option was riding to the town C now. In case the name sounds familiar to you, you are right. My travel partner and I drove by sea now on our way to the mountains the day we encountered the horrible sandstorm. But this time I wanted to go to sea now for a special event that is happening only once a week, each Thursday morning. The local camel market and the camel auctions. I turn off now to see now. I hope this market that I want to go to tomorrow morning is even happening. Um, I think it's not a touristic thing at all. And I as well couldn't get any updated information online or anywhere else. And I as well know that um, markets were and are still canceled due to COVID. So we will see, fingers crossed, that it's taking place. Guys, look, how cute is that? I guess this is a good hint that the market is happening. A pickup truck with three camels going to see now. Hello camels, how cute are they? <laughs> the locals here are so funny. They really all drive super good and it's never a chaos, but they drive as well super fast. I'm driving 120 or so, no, even 130 kilometers per hour, and he overtakes me having camels on the back of his truck. And look at this camel, it must be a special one because its owner put a mattress in the back, so it's more comfy, a luxury camel. After seeing all the cars transporting camels to see now, I was pretty confident that the market would take place the next morning. But once I reached see now, I had another thing to worry about, finding an accommodation. 
this is again one of the places you can't find any hotels online that cater to foreign tourists. I see some accommodations on Google Maps, but everything is only in Arabic, so nothing, no information that I can get. Um, but I will just drive around a bit and see what I can find. I found a hotel that offered apartments and that I saw some of the sellers of the market staying at, right outside Zinao Center at the main road. I'm gonna show you my hotel for tonight. It's basically not a hotel, it's a rented apartment again because there were no real hotels. And little kitchen. This here is the sleeping room. It's huge. Sleeping in these beds that have plastic under the sheets. Listen to that. I have another question. So none of the rooms, Omani rooms that we had on the road that are not for tourists, had night lamps and all of them had neon lamps here on the ceilings. So they are super bright and as well the switches for the lights are not close to the bed but very far away somewhere here in the back. So how do people do that? They switch off the light and walk to the bed in dark or do they sleep with light or I don't know but it's very difficult for me to understand why there are never night lamps and after a night in the desert that's how my clothing bag looks like yeah it's sand everywhere let's go and hunt some food some dinner so I asked the guy who rented out the apartment to me what the best restaurant in town is and he said there's a pizza place that is really good and that's a bit surprising to me. I have to admit um, I wouldn't mind having a pizza but I as well didn't expect to have a pizza and um, I might as well stop at a local market to get some salad in addition. It's really so nice to see all these towns only come alive after sunset. When I arrived it was like a dead town and now it's super busy. That's very very nice. So I guess this was a successful mission. Pizza was suggested to me as the best restaurant in town. We will see. Maybe it's for some wedgies. Thank you. Perfect. Good morning, everyone. The early bird catches the worm, or in our case, the early bird catches the camel. It's 6 a.m. and I'm heading to the souk, to the market of Sinab now. I actually have to look a bit where the market really is, but here you see all these cars already with animals on them. Mostly goats and cows so far, but here on the right I can see the camels. Due to the COVID restrictions, the camel market since 2020 doesn't take place inside the souk, the market building of Sinau anymore like it used to, but on an open space right outside the town center on the northern road. You can't miss it though, because literally everyone who is awake at 6 a.m. on a Thursday morning is heading there. <laughs> The traditional market culture in Oman is unique and has a very long history. The history of seafaring in Oman already began during the 3rd millennium BC and Oman has been a crossroad for traders and merchants since then. The Omanis were known for building and exporting very good ships and they traded with precious goods such as frankincense. But as well camels have always been valuable assets to Omanis. 
In the past, camels have been essential for transport and survival in the desert. And today, the animals are still highly valued. After soaking in the special atmosphere, with about 100 camels lined up in front of Sinau city walls just in time for sunrise, I at one point tried to find out more about the auctions and talked to some locals. You buy for eating or you buy for farm? Yeah, yes, I'm selling. I'm selling. Eating. Okay. Some people they want me. Yeah. How much? Five zero. Five zero. It's expensive, huh? Huh? Not so cheap. Yeah. One hundred. One hundred. They explained that most of the goats, cows and other animals are just for regular sale. But the camels are sold in an auction. The first hour of the market, everyone who is interested can just stroll around and have a look at the animals. A bit later starts an auction that sells the camels to the highest bidder. So I did what everyone else did, strolled around, checked out the animals and chatted to the sellers who were all surprised to see me roaming around, but as well happily invited me to chai and breakfast. So I guess this market was an overall success for me. I got invited to a little chai and a breakfast and people were super nice and so interesting to see and basically no other tourists. The camel auctions are the highlight of the Thursday market in Sinau and the reason why people come here from all over the country. But all the auction rules that I knew didn't apply to this one though. I saw nobody raising hands or really bidding. Only the auctioneers made a lot of noise. So I at one point found a local who spoke a bit English and who explained to me how the auction really works. Rule number one, you never raise a hand. Raising a hand means raising the price abruptly. Rule number two, just not for bidding. Nodding means raising the price by only a small amount above the last bid. Rule number three, if you are a seller, listen to the bidding prices carefully. Depending on the previous auction results of the day, many sellers decide to not put their camels on the auctions anymore because they realize that they don't get for their camel what they wanted on this day. So not all camels that you see are sold at the auction in the end. <laughs> On this day, the price for average young camels was about 800 euros, the price for older ones between 1000 and 1600 euro. Camels that are used for racing are much more valuable though and can easily cost 80,000 euros or more. That was super nice and you see how busy the market still is. I probably spent two hours here watching and walking around, but it's still on. My guess is that around nine or ten will probably end because then it's just getting too hot outside. Yeah, but I found this a um, very interesting experience. can highly recommend. Hey, darling. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. And now the biggest problem. I have camel shit on my shoes and I need to pack them and it really smells. And the learning always bring a plastic bag for occasions like this. Guys, I hope you liked this episode and leave a thumbs up and comment, so the camel shit on my shoes was worth it. Next week will be already the last episode of the series Oman Overland and I will take you to Old Forts and Nizwa, one of the most historical and important cities of Oman. I hope you will join this last part of the trip and are ready for the Grand Finale in Oman. Got to go!